Good evening, one day is Tuesday, September 19th, 2023, Chef Day 4, Wednesday at 20. All right, we've got an honorable mention tonight, and when I mentioned honorable mention, everybody asked me for parameters. I was a little hesitant to put parameters in here just because it makes it look official, but if you felt like you really had to do something, then knock yourself out. I'm, I'm going to pass on it. Initially caught my eye. I did like it. It's, it's kind of an accelerated trend higher. It is a Chinese stock. But it's kind of like the only stock out there that looks halfway decent on the long side. So you have no wind at your back to speak of. And it's just I just don't think it's worth going after. I just noticed I didn't flag. LRCX is a potential short in the making. I'd like to see a little bit more of a bounce in here. just thought I would show it to you more as a, a reference of what's going on. I am beginning to see some of these semis looking really toppy in here. And I want to point that out to you. That's why I put it in the laundry list. I don't suggest you rush out and short it. But it does look like it is in trouble. URG looks okay in the uranium. These stocks are going to have some issues in general, though they tend to be choppy longer term, but when they go, they can really go. I'd like to see a little bit more knockout in this one before getting too excited. And it's slightly thin when you consider the price of the stock. Let's take a look at the portfolio. And as you can see, I sort of can kind of pick apart things when conditions improve, obviously, then it's then the, my time is spent spending quite a bit of time trying to figure out which stock is the best stock out of out of a half a dozen or 20 stocks, as opposed to right now, like, eh, we got this one stock that looks okay. And you're just not getting that, that F yeah type of feeling. KBH, a little bit of a bounce there, not much to really report. It does look like a major top so far remains in place. KNF selling off fairly hard, but coming back a little bit by the end of the day only off a smidge on the day and lfmd got thwarted at the top of its range but well off its worst levels i hate to read too much into things while everything is just chopping around and obviously i sure would feel a lot better once all three of these hit the ipt let's take a look at the overall market a few things to flesh out tonight first of all the peas uh, sold off a little recovered by the end of the day maybe we're kind of in wait and see mode with this Fed still looks toppy, as you can see, longer term, kind of head and shoulder-ish looking. Same thing goes for the NASDAQ, as I've been saying, quite a bit. Shoulder, head, and then a shoulder. That, in and of itself, I wouldn't get too excited about that. It's certainly not a positive sign, though. If we do take out the bottom of this, that would be of some concern. Or if we get uh, some sort of other setup within the bigger picture pattern, as I often talk about. Rusty, same as it ever was, stuck in the middle of its range, but you can see continues to slide on a short-term basis. Tried to rally, came all the way back in. So that's obviously a bummer. Energy's got hit a little bit in here. They did make an outside day down, but so far they're just correcting a little bit. And they actually could correct quite a bit. And that would be a healthy thing for the market. A little bit of a shakeout move. Ideally, a big fat TKO, especially when you get a nice persistent trend like this. And energies really aren't known to persist like this. So that would be great. Big knockout move. So get ready to get ready or continue to get ready to get ready as far as the energies are concerned. Biotech bounced a little bit, but it's just looking kind of ugly here. As you can see, lots of overhead supply to deal with. Drugs, a little bit of a bounce, but they're stuck in a trading range. I guess on a relative strength basis, they're a little stronger than most other areas, but that in and of itself isn't enough to get excited. Uh, Software had a little bit of a bounce. We've got this gap down in here, and they're looking kind of bigger picture topic too, kind of a slightly unorthodox head and shoulders top. But there's your shoulder, there's your head. This would be your other shoulder. No way to gap down here. Also, right shoulder higher than the left, which is a bit of a bearish type of thing if you dig out Schaubacher and Edward Zumagi and all these other technical analysis books. And I guess the, the reason is, and, and I've just learned, learned it by looking at charts empirically, so to speak, but the reason is I think this fakes everyone out like, hey, we're off to the races, everything's fine, you're almost at multi-year highs. And then when the market rolls back over, more people are trapped on the wrong side. So always think in terms of who's trapped on the wrong side, how uh, it affects the people and the players. You can see semiconductors right here at multi-month lows, lowest level since all the way back in May. So we've given up a whole summer, so to speak, worth of trading there. That's that's not a good thing, obviously. So as you can tell by my inflection tonight, that... It's just not that pretty out there, and at the least, it's just choppy. Not an environment that we want to be trading, as I've said, ad nauseum. 
I wish somebody 20 or I guess now 30, geez, years ago would have told me that it's okay to sit on your hands, it's okay to wait and wait for the, the, the trends to come along. In fact, I just did a, um, it'll post probably tomorrow on YouTube. I did um, today's, this week's presentation on uh, Jesse Livermore and a lot of that was basically on waiting for your pitch. A lot of the stuff that you hear me preaching all the time. Anyway, I think that's it for tonight. Everybody have a fantastic night. If you have any questions, you know the routine. Thank you so much.